Hi everyone, my name is Sean Thompson and today I'm just going to take you through a little wee introduction in how to um, interpret the, the regions of a 12 lead ECG and also how to relate that back to the actual anatomy of the heart. Now here we see a fairly um, straightforward, nice clear uh, 12 lead ECG. Now for those of you on a quick look who um, are, are quite observant, you'll notice that there are some um, some sections of ST elevation, sort of looking around maybe V1, V2, V3. But what does that actually mean? How do we actually work out what is going on in this patient's heart? Well, let's take a look. Okay, let's break it down. So when we're looking at the actual regions of an ECG, um, it's very, very important that we know how to describe those regions and how to describe whereabouts in the heart they um, they actually relate to. First of all, let's take a look at uh, leads 1 and AVL. Those are your high lateral leads. Now they're closely related to leads V5 and V6, which are your low lateral leads. So V1, uh, sorry, lead 1, AVL, V5 and V6 are your lateral leads. Now moving right along to leads 2, 3 and AVF. Those are your inferior leads. So those are the leads that relate to the inferior region of the heart. Now, septal and anterior leads. So V1 and V2. Now V1 is always septal. V2 is possibly septal, but possibly also anterior. And what you need to do is look at the company that it keeps. So if you see ST elevation in V2 and V1, then you're looking at certainly septal infarction or damage to that portion of the heart. Now if you're seeing ST elevation in V2 but not in V1, but maybe you are seeing elevation in V3 and, and possibly even V4, then, you'll, then V2 is relating to an anterior portion of the heart because that lead on V2 looks at both anterior and septal portions of the heart. So look at the company that it keeps. Don't just see a single lead in isolation. So V2, V3 and V4, those are your anterior leads of the heart. And then what about AVR? Well a lot of people wonder about AVR but let's just not focus too much on that for the moment but one of the most useful things to look at in AVR is is the QRS complex negative? Is it facing down? And if it is, then that's good because it shows that you've got your limb leads on the right way around. Okay, so let's look at the anatomy of the heart because it's all very well to, to you know, look at your 12 lead ECG, but actually you've got to relate that back to the actual physical anatomy of the heart. Now there are three uh, coronary arteries that I really care about. Okay, there's the right coronary artery, the left coronary artery, and um, the left anterior descending. Now the left coronary artery splits off into the left anterior descending and the left circumflex artery. Okay, so don't forget there's a very important bifurcation where that left coronary artery um, splits off into the left circumflex and the left anterior descending. Okay, right coronary artery, left circumflex, left anterior descending. So here we go, we've got our ECG again. So how on earth do those arteries relate to the ECG? Well, I've got a very useful little, little trick that I want to teach you. Okay, so take your ECG. Now, just for argument's sake, let's just place the aorta bang over AVR because we're not worrying too much about AVR at the moment. Okay, now this is what I like to call Sean's octopus. Here we go. Now, the right coronary artery comes off the aorta and the right coronary artery feeds leads to three and AVF. And so for those of you who will know that those are the inferior leads. Okay? The inferior leads are fed by the right coronary artery. Leads two, three, and AVF. Right. The left anterior descending artery that feeds the um, lead V1, V2, V3, and V4. So those septal and anterior portions of the heart are fed by the left anterior descending artery. And then the left circumflex artery, that feeds those lateral leads, okay? So V5 and V6, your low lateral leads, and lead 1 and AVL, your high lateral leads. So that's a really, really useful little diagram that helps you to understand actually which parts of the heart, which uh, coronary arteries are perfused by which... Um, which coronary arteries? So which coronary arteries are, 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 are being affected when you see ST elevation 
or ST segment changes on your 12 lead ECG. Now it's important to remember that the heart is a, a complex three-dimensional organ, okay, and each patient you attend will have slightly differing um, anatomy, okay, so this is a good rule that will probably cover, you know, maybe 80 to 90 percent of your patients, but just remember that there are going to be some that maybe don't quite fit this picture perfectly, but hopefully that helps.